All right, one last segment for the first uh, chapter, and that's units and unit conversions. We talked a little bit about units, but one of the most important things that you'll be doing in your chemical problems will be converting between one type of units and another type of units. A lot of times uh, you plug into the formula, you get an answer right away, but the answer will be in some completely bizarre set of units, and you'll need to convert it to the right set of units for the answer. So let's get going. Uh, share the screen and we'll start working some example problems. A lot of these are best done by working out example problems and looking what happens when we do those problems. Okay, units and unit conversions. So uh, let's start with something simple. What is the density of copper in kilograms per centimeter cubed if a sample weighing 324.5 grams has a volume of 36.2 centimeters cubed? I'll uh, pause, uh, or rather I'll stop you pause, you uh, think about it a little bit and see where we're at. Okay, coming back. So uh, let's switch to this nicer editing mode. So the density is simply mass over volume. We know that. And we get 324.5 grams over 36.2 centimeters cubed. Uh, and so uh, that would give us 8.96 grams over centimeters cubed. Notice how we got some significant digits coming back because uh, there's only there's four significant digits in the numerator, three in the denominator. So there's three significant digits in the answer. Now we've got an answer, perfectly reasonable density, 8.96 grams per centimeter cubed. The problem is we're asked for the answers in, um, in kilograms per centimeter cubed, not grams per centimeter cubed. So what we want to do, we want, to, we want it to stay the same amount. You know, really, nature doesn't care if we measure, measure grams or kilograms. The answer is the same. So we want to multiply by something that keeps it exactly the same but changes the units. And so, of course, we do what mathematicians always do. Uh, we multiply by one we multiply by a special one. We're going to multiply by uh, one kilogram over 1,000 grams. Now, one kilogram and 1,000 grams are exactly the same thing. But now we can cancel the grams, and we can just read right off that it's going to have the correct units. We have kilograms in the numerator and uh, centimeters cubed in the denominator. And then, so what we're going to do is take 8.96 divide by 1,000, that gives us 0 0.00896 kilograms per centimeter cubed. So it's going to be E, the last answer there. And really what we did there, multiply by a factor of one that has the units we don't want in the denominator and the units we do want in the numerator is pretty much the same thing we're gonna be doing every single time. There's just might be a lot of them. So let's go on to a more, uh, uh, more complicated, more realistic example, something that might actually pop up in some sort of engineering calculation that you need to do. So um, a barrel of oil is divide, defined as 42 gallons, and a gallon is uh, 3.78514 liters. That's essentially a definition. Most uh, um, non-SI units actually have definitions in terms of SI, SI units, so we can treat that as exact. Um, the U.S. produced 9.3 million barrels of oil per day in 2017. So about how many cubic meters of oil did the U.S. produce in 2017? Okay, so uh, we know the, um, the amount, of oil in, uh, amount of oil per day, so we need to just multiply that by uh, the number of days in a year, and that'll give us the total amount. But um, we need to do a lot of unit conversions. So let's start with what we have. So um, we have 9.3 times 10 to, so a million, 10 to the sixth. It's usually easiest whenever you're doing these problems to do it in scientific notation. So you've already always got exponents. That way when you're multiplying large or small numbers together, all you have to do is add the exponents. So, 9.3 times 10 to the sixth. Uh, barrels is actually, there is an abbreviation for the unit, it's BBL, uh, per day. 
And uh, now we definitely want to get rid of the barrels. 42 gallons per one barrel. Those are the same thing. So we're just multiplying by one. Uh, let's multiply by another one. There's 3.78541 liters per gallon. We want to get rid of liters. And we know that there are 1,000 liters uh, in one meter cubed. Aha, so we were getting rid of the liters and we're getting meters cubed at the top. Uh, if we cancel these out, uh, barrels goes away, gallons goes away, liters goes away, and we have um, an answer in meters cubed uh, per day. But we don't want meters cubed per day, we want meters cubed per year. And so we're gonna multiply by uh, 365 days. Uh, make one year, and it wasn't a leap year, so we have the right number of days. Uh, we multiply all that out, plug it into a calculator, you get um, three, five, sorry, you get um, five, three, nine, six, eight, zero, six, nine, two, uh, uh, point six cubic meters per year. Now clearly this is way too many significant digits. Looking at this, uh, we're actually limited by the number of significant digits in 9.3. Uh, 42 gallons is exact, 3.78541 liters is exact uh, by definition, and then days per year, that's exact as well. Um, our limiting factor is the two significant digits in our initial number. So this, and then we want to convert to scientific notation, so it's unambiguous. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, the answer is 5.4 times 10 to the eighth cubic meters per year. So that's a little more complicated example, though examples of this difficulty level happen, you know, a lot of the time. So the key that we want to do is always write out everything, write out every single unit you're going to convert, and then cancel them on the top or top and bottom. And when you're done, you'll just be able to, you're left with um, a multiplication that you need to carry out and uh, the units that you care about in the end. Oh, let's cancel. I forgot to cancel something. Days. Let's get the days canceled. There we go. Days are canceled and we can read it right off. The answer is going to be in meters cubed. That unit is still left and years is still there as well. Uh, so that's pretty typical example that you you happen across all the time. So please practice this carefully. And I just want to emphasize, having taught this class, this is my fifth year teaching it now, at least one third of all errors on homework and exams are caused by problems in unit conversion. Let me emphasize, at least one third of all errors on homework and exams are caused by problems in unit conversion. Once more, in bolder, in red, at least a third of all errors on homework and exams are caused by problems in unit conversion. So what you really want to be doing is being, be careful write out all the unit conversions. Don't do it in your head. Heads are not made for things like this. This is what paper is for. So uh, go through and do this and uh, you'll magically get rid of a third of your errors. All right.